where the life of Jesus meets yours for 10 minutes every day. That's the Raised with Jesus podcast, and today we finish with our conclusion of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Beginning in verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the Lord's body and blood. Instead, let a person examine himself, and after doing so, let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For if anyone eats and drinks in an unworthy way because he does not recognize the Lord's body, he eats and drinks judgment on himself. Because of this, many among you are weak and sick, and quite a few have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be undergoing judgment. However, when we undergo judgment, we are being disciplined by the Lord, so that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, so that your coming together may not result in judgment. The rest of my instructions I will give when I come. This is the word of our God. So beginning in verse 27 is really, you know, a paragraph or two of a very practical, uh, straightforward counsel and instruction on how to carry out this practice of the Lord's Supper. And I know we've talked about it before, but it, it bears repeating here that what we do is a reflection of what we believe, and what we believe is practiced by what we do. That's the relationship that we call doctrine and practice. Doctrine meaning what we believe, practice meaning what we do. And so what we believe influences what we do. And that's exactly what Paul says here. Verses 27 and 28, he makes the point that whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Um, And, verse 28, that a person ought to examine oneself before he or she comes to commune. And take that together with what he says back in chapter 10, verse 16, that you are a member of the altar at which you eat. And so one of the one of the primary requirements um, when we talk about readiness for the Lord's Supper. The primary requirement is an understanding, verse 27, of the real presence. That is the primary reason that we practice close communion. Close communion, closed communion. What we mean by that is that it is closed to outsiders because it is close among those who are of the same faith, (laughs) the insiders, for lack of a better word, although that has bad connotations to it, I suppose. Um, But it can't be close to those insiders, to the, the ones who share that common faith, unless it is first closed to the outsiders. And that means that you commune at the table that is in your fellowship, and you don't commune at a table that is not of your fellowship, because, chapter 10, you are a member at which, at the table or the altar at which you eat. And so then he gets into the question of worthiness, and what does it mean to eat the cup and eat and drink of the cup and the bread in a worthy manner? Well, that's really talking about faith. Faith is the, the primary <laughs> requirement for um, for examining oneself and for communing at the Lord's table. And it all kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, first of all, is this fact of the real presence, that if you eat or drink in an unworthy manner, which is in disregard of your own sin, in disregard of the Lord's words here, then you'll be eating and drinking and sinning against the Lord's body and blood. And if the Lord's Supper were merely a symbolic thing, you can't sin against what's, what isn't there. Like right now, um, I can't punch you <laughs> because I'm not there. I can't sin against you because I'm not there with you. And that's the same thing Paul says here. You can't sin against something that's not there. But you need to understand how to commune properly and in a worthy manner so that you don't sin against what is there, the Lord's body and blood. And so this examination of oneself, that is in verse 28, um, first and foremost, it's the question, do I recognize what God is saying here? Do I recognize what Jesus is saying here about his real presence? his body and blood here present in the Lord's Supper, um, his his body with the bread, his blood with the wine. Secondly, do I see that this is for my forgiveness of sins? That means, and that presupposes that I am a sinner and that I am repentant 
That's the attitude of faith. The attitude of faith does not defend one's sin or stand up and say, hey, it's my right to do this, um, or to say that God has somehow re changed his definition of sin. The attitude of faith recognizes and affirms that what God says is sin is sin in my life and that I am convicted of that sin. And so the person who comes in a worthy manner recognizes that he or she is a sinful person, that God's law condemns them, and they come in repentance and in faith that says and that recognizes that Jesus distributes forgiveness here for me as he gives me his true body and blood. And so it all kind of wraps together like that. And then kind of the, the final the final part that was especially brought out in chapter 10, but it's also kind of alluded to here and talked about here, that you are in fellowship with those nearby, with those with whom you commune, because you are a member at the altar at which you eat. Um, going on with verse 29. For if anyone eats and drinks in an unworthy way because he does not recognize the Lord's body, he eats and drinks judgment on himself. A couple of things on this one. Um, the older translation or the other translation of discern is just basically putting English letters to the Greek word, uh, diacrino, um, to discern, to understand. Um, but a better English, modern English term would be recognized as we have here. And then the judgment, eats and drinks judgment on himself. The King James Version um, really messed this one up. The King James Version said he eats and drinks damnation or condemnation on himself. And that's wrong. Because the word that he uses here is crino, um, which is judgment, discipline. Um, the word for condemnation or damnation would be kata crino, like ultra, ultra judgment, <laughs> ultra um, discipline kind of a thing. And so the word that he uses here is crino, just judgment, not kata crino, condemnation. So Paul isn't saying that if you eat and drink unworthily, you are immediately condemned with no chance of repentance. What he is saying is that you need to discern or recognize that Jesus gives his body and blood in this sacrament for your good and for the forgiveness of your sins. And to eat and drink in an unworthy way is to eat and drink God's judgment on oneself. Um, what that looks like, he gives an example in verse 30. But God's judgment, God's discipline isn't limited to that example. God reserves the right to do as he pleases. Obviously, he's God and we're not. And God's judgment may take various forms. In verse 30, they had a rash of funerals. And that would be in keeping with with the, some of the Old Testament pictures that we have of people approaching God in an unworthy way. Uh, Nadab and Abihu, um, they go in and they offer incense before the Lord in an unworthy way, unauthorized, and God burns them up. They die. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, they get swallowed up into the, into the earth alive. They die. Miriam, and she was uh, excluded from the camp because God had struck her with leprosy. And God made it very, very apparent that she had she had spoken improperly. Um, the the man who reached up to study the Ark of the Covenant as it was coming back to Jerusalem, he did it by accident, but he was struck down and he died. Those who looked into the Ark of the Covenant struck down and died, and that's God's discipline because God is defending His own honor there. God says. You have to come in a worthy way, which is coming in faith and coming in repentance, or you're going to put yourself under God's judgment. That judgment may take various forms. It might not be a rash of, of funerals, but if there does happen to be all of a sudden, you know, kind of a rash of funerals in a church, maybe it's time to give pause and say, time out, what's going on here? And what is our practice of the Lord's Supper? But that discipline from God, verse 29 may be much more subtle um, if somebody is coming in on repentance or they are holding to a particular sin and defending a particular sin rather than confessing it and coming in in faith that says lord forgive me for this sin and strengthen me against this sin if they're coming with an attitude that says lord i know i'm a sinner but i'm not 
I have no desire whatsoever because I love to indulge in this particular sin. That's not an attitude of faith. Somebody who comes without that in that attitude might still commune. They might not die right there. But they might be they might be strengthened in the idea that they could get away with their sin. It's really a proclamation of the gospel where the gospel is ought not be proclaimed. Um, if somebody comes and and they are unrepentant and they commune and they say, hey, nothing nothing bad happened, then they are boldened, they are emboldened, I guess they become more bold to continue in their sin. And over time they the heart becomes hard in repentance toward that sin and against the idea of repenting for that sin because well you know you commune me pastor and how how is it that um you know god talks about discipline but i'm still right here what's up with that what a terrifying place to be rather than you know being struck down to be alive and to have my heart hardened against a particular sin and to be at risk of losing my eternal salvation because of my unrepentance. And me, Pastor Hagen, as a pastor, to put somebody in a position where the Lord's Supper would be taken to their detriment, where they come in unrepentance, which isn't the attitude of faith. They come in unrepentance and I commune them. Oh my goodness. That's, you know, spiritual malpractice. Because I'm not here to simply pat everybody on the, on the back or say, you know, here are all the gold stars and, and you get one and you get one. I'm here to, I've been called by God here to proclaim law and gospel and to bring people to repentance and to comfort the repentant with forgiveness of sins. And the Lord's Supper here talks about, Paul talks about it in a very, very serious way when he says we ought to discern we ought to recognize the Lord's body and blood. We ought to recognize our own sin. We ought to come in repentance. And then, there, at that place, at that time, as Jesus gives his body and blood, then every repentant sinner receives the blessing of forgiveness. Because that's the thing. And we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, because I know I'm going a little bit longer. But that's the thing, that every single communicant receives by mouth the Lord's body and blood together with the bread and the wine. The believing communicant receives the blessing of forgiveness. The unrepentant or unbelieving communicant receives God's discipline, puts himself or herself under God's wrath in whatever form that may take. And so as we go about your day, just take a moment to pause and thank God for this gift of the forgiveness of sins offered and given in his sacrament. And if you're listening to this with, with somebody, you know, a friend or a spouse, then take a moment and speak with them and say, you know, I'm sorry. And confess whatever it may be that you have done. And say, please forgive me. Because that's the other part we'll talk about tomorrow. You can find us Sunday morning, 9 a.m., 2250 South Holland Savina Road in Maumee. You can also follow us on Facebook. Just search for Resurrection Mommy. Um, and once you find our page, then click that little follow so you see us first. And give a like, a follow, and a share. Or a like, a comment, and a share on any post that you might see. We're going to be trying the, uh, the Sunday recap for about the next month or so. And we'll see how that goes on Facebook. Anyway, God bless your day.